We've been talking a lot today as we broadcast live from the Build America Mutual offices in downtown Manhattan. We've been talking a lot about the flood of cash into municipal debt this year and the uh, commensurate issuance flood that we've seen. The question is, as an investor in the assets, where are there still opportunities given how much spread tightening we've seen? Mark Muller, head of municipal investments at Lowe's Corporation, and Grant Dewey, head of municipal, uh, municipal credit, uh, capital markets excuse me, at uh, Build America Mutual, joining us here on site. Mark, I want to start with you. Where do you see opportunity at this point? Uh, Thanks, Lisa. So I'm an institutional investor. I represent a property casualty insurance company. So unlike the demand side that we've seen in municipals, significant cash inflows to the market, I would say on the institutional side, we're a little bit less enthused in translating that we don't see as many opportunities. Part of it's in relation to moving from a 35% corporate tax rate to a 21% corporate tax rate. It's not the same for us as it is for that individual investor, in particular the high net worth individual investor. But having said that, there still are some opportunities out there. When you and Paul were speaking with Pat, uh, you referenced the taxable muni market. That's kind of a growing area within our supply. So if we hit $400 billion, which has been the 10-year long-run average of annual supply, that taxable market was less than 10%, probably on the magnitude of 5 to 7. Paul, what is the point of taxable municipal bonds? I mean, the whole point is tax-free, isn't it? I don't get it. Here are the experts. Why, Why do you invest in taxable municipals? Well, from our standpoint, uh, the municipal issuer is a very high-quality credit. So as a fixed-income investor, for our overall portfolio, we're considering treasuries, sovereigns, IG corporates, high yield, and municipals. To your point, Lisa, it used to be that the munis were very attractive at that 35% corporate tax rate for the Uh, translation, but we'll still be interested in those municipal issuers at a taxable uh, yield, given the high credit quality. So, Grant, uh, at Build America Mutual, I know you guys on the insurance side work with a lot of smaller issuers. Give us a sense of the health of kind of these small towns, smaller issuers. Kind of what are you seeing out there in the marketplace? I think the asset class, you know, continues to be uh, very high quality. So, um, so from a risk standpoint, obviously each credit is different. We're looking at, uh, you know, unfunded pension liabilities, a lot of different, a lot of different areas. But, um, you know, we're also trying to build our presence in the medium to larger size institutions, also. So we're, in, uh, I run the, the business that does secondary market insurance. Okay. So in the primary, obviously. Um, You know, insurance is used when there's an economic benefit. And so in the primary, some of that economic benefit accrues to the issuer. In the secondary, that economic benefit. Explain the secondary market. I understand the primary market where you go to a a, a small town and say, well, you will insure your bond so you can get a better rate. What's the secondary market? So, Paul, that's, um, you know, once a bond has been issued as uninsured and it trades, um, you know, it trades in the market freely, there can be credit changes in... um, in particular credits over time. So, um, uh, or an investor, um, you know, if a bond gets downgraded, maybe they want to buy protection. So, um, so we do a lot of work on bonds, you know, that have been already issued where the investor wants to uh, buy the insurance. And so if it makes sense, i.e. the cost of the insurance is less uh, than the benefit yeah. to the investor then. All right. So, Mark, talking about the secondary market, you know, people talk about the corporate bond market as being a little esoteric with lots of different Q-SIPs. The municipal bond market makes it look basically like the treasury market or stocks. Uh, you know, all the different Q-SIPs, all the different issuers, small issues. Given the flood of money coming from overseas investors, how does that factor in to to a market that's highly idiosyncratic? So let's put a number on highly idiosyncratic. 50,000 different issuers. That's that's idiosyncratic. That counts. You're talking about, uh, from my perspective, we're trying to canvas the entire universe to find the value. The international investor is a little bit different. Uh, From my understanding, uh, 
they adhere strictly to conventions. So they want to make sure there's representation in the index. So a lot of the non-index eligible taxable issuance uh, wouldn't be of interest to them. They have very high credit quality standards. So they're flying in a spectrum that's probably double A or higher. So all the A rated and triple B securities in the muni marketplace get left behind. So we do see their presence and it has moved to tighten up credit spreads on the taxables. uh, But it's been to a particular subset of the overall marketplace at this point. We still have the highest yields in the uh, globe. So it, could be foreseeable that you could see uh, credit preferences or credit criteria moving down the spectrum and expanding, uh, particularly given the lack of defaults that have ever been associated with the municipal credit. Grant, just real quick, 20 seconds. Are you seeing more activity in your secondary market as we get 10 years into this recovery? Uh, Yes, we are. Um, And uh, again, the focus is on a little bit larger issues um, and increased kind of liquidity of, uh, of BAM's wrap. Interesting. Mark Muller, head of municipal investments, Lowe's Corporation, and Grant Dewey, head of municipal capital markets at Build American Mutual. Thank you so much for joining us.